Hey friends, Sean from Draft Therapy here on today's review for you, but I'm not dead yet. Bring Out Your Dead is a 4.8% IPA from Brew Detroit in Detroit, Michigan. In my opinion, Brew Detroit is one of the best breweries that just flies under the radar that has distribution. Now I know that's a bit of a specific way to word all that, but I just think that they're sneaky good. Chances are you've probably already had some of their handiwork without even knowing it, but if you've ever been to their tasting room, you'll soon find out that while they're a contract brew house, they have a lot of quality beers in their own right. Today I'm bringing out the dead with their Bring Out the Dead Session IPA, which is a collaborative effort between Brew Detroit and the Detroit City Football Club. So if you don't find this on shelves, you'll be able to find it this spring at Kiewer Stadium whenever Detroit City plays. So let's take a look at the label and we'll get it into a glass. Fun fact, some of the beers that Brew Detroit is contracted for are from breweries such as Saugatuck Brewing, Greenbush, Coonan, and a few others that I've seen in their warehouse, but I'm pretty sure I'm not allowed to mention. So if you know who distributes Brew Detroit around the state, let us know in the comments down below. All right, now back into the label. Uh, on the front of this, this is a really cool label, and I think Brew Detroit has been doing an awesome job lately of really branding their stuff. Uh, this is a black label. It's a matte black label on the top. Uh, actually, it's like three colors, right? So it's matte black as the background. The font almost exclusively is in this kind of mustardy orange, and then the outlines on some of the font and the other color that's in this, I guess it's four colors, is a um, crimson kind of red and then the skulls are white. And there's, there, it's more than four colors, okay? Just forget I said anything about colors. So anyways, across the top, it says Brew Detroit, bring out your dead with a pile of skulls in the background. It's like this red smoke and it forms, I'm saying this is gonna, in the black behind bring out your dead, looks like it's in the kind of in the shape of a tombstone. And again, it's just this pile of skulls on the bottom. It says India Pale Ale, one pint. And then on the side here, it says Brew Detroit, Michigan with their seal, which is, um, it's hard to describe. It's like two Roman figures, one with a paddle and one with a hop cone. And then under that is the Detroit City Football Club logo with the Spirit of Detroit. Juicy Session IPA dry hopped with mosaic and lotus hops. And then again, it has Detroit, Michigan here at the state of Michigan with the star on the, on the city of Detroit and the independent craft beer logo. Underneath that is 4.8% alcohol by volume, one pint. And then directly next to that is the government warning telling you that Brew Detroit LLC is in Detroit. Michigan. So yeah, just a really cool can. Uh, I think that this is a really nice looking label. It's really striking. You see this on the shelf. And when I first saw it, I was like, who is who? What beer is that? You know, it was kind of really caught my eye. And then on the bottom, this is the brewed on date. It was uh, packaged. I'm sorry, package date, January 21st, 2020, which was just a few weeks ago. I picked this up at eight degrees Play-Doh in Detroit, but I have since seen it kind of around town. I picked it up over a week ago. Uh, I'm going to use my IPA glass, like I said before. If you you may have seen my tribute video to the to the, this glass's brother who broke, this will be the last one I'm buying. The speed glue glasses like this, the walls are really thin, so they break really easily. I put the last one, I uh, put it in the dishwasher, so it kept broken. So this is the last one. So let's go ahead and crack this and put a nose on the can here. Juicy session IPA. It does have a, actually, it has a really kind of bursting citrus tropical aroma. It smells really good. Now, I'm not really sure too much about, uh, I'm sorry, lotus hops, obviously mosaic, I'm very aware of. Let's go ahead and pour this, get a better grip on here. And that's very yellow coming out of the can, a lot lighter than I was expecting it to be. I thought it would be a little bit darker for some reason. And then right down the center of the glass here, lots ahead, it's going to probably bubble over. Oh, it looks like I saved it. Not too bad. This IPA glass, infamous for just really boosting up the head. This is like a whole fist of fingers uh, on the head here. The, the bubbles are really compact, super dense, super compact, really uh, almost glaringly white. Like it's a little bit darker. It's like a shade darker than white. It's not brilliant white like you might see in a Pilsner or a lager, but it is very white. And we're going to go ahead and hold this one up because I'm just going to let this just keep going. And it says it's juicy on the on the on the label here, but it is not hazy. Uh, there is a little bit holding in suspension here, but really, this is very clear. Like I can see through pretty well. Um, I can magnify my hand. Uh, yeah. So putting a better nose on the glass here. 
it does smell very fruity. It smells very fragrant. has a lot of kind of a tropical aroma to it. It has like a, almost a candy kind of aroma to it, like maybe a little bit of a watermelon kind of thing going on. But it smells like it smells like what you would expect a juicy, I'm sorry, a New England style IPA to smell like because a juicy IPA, you know, or hazy IPA, that's not they're not the same thing. People don't think they're the same thing. Whatever. All right. So but you and I know when we see juicy IPA, we think it's going to be a New England style or hazy for that matter. So let's go ahead and dive right in. Cheers. Now, I'm going to be really honest here. I am taking a drink. The mouth feels very light. Okay, it's 4.8%, super sessionable. Mouth feels very light, very crisp, just really, um, really on the light side. It doesn't have a whole lot of body to it. And the flavor, I, I have to work for it. Like, I really have to work to pick these flavors out. First sip, first impression, first sip was not overwhelming, you know, by any stretch of the imagination. but. I can tell there's something going on in there. So let's go take another taste. So first taste that I get and the overwhelming taste off the off the at the beginning, off the bat, I guess, is um it's like a floral sweetness. Like a it's sweet, it's a little tad tiny bit sweet. It's very subtle. The sweetness that's in there, but it has a floral kind of flavor to it, a floral sweetness to it. And then I'm really, honestly, really working to get any kind of flavor past that. Like, I'm getting that floral, but I'm getting this almost, um, as it kind of sits on my tongue and I get the aftertaste that kind of kicks in, I get this little bit, maybe almost of a of a marshmallow kind of flavor, a vanilla marshmallowy kind of flavor. I don't generally taste marshmallow in beer. I usually kind of tie it to a vanilla flavor, but I'm getting the uh, legitimately getting this marshmallow kind of flavor to it. When I take a bigger, quicker drink, that's when that flavor really comes through more, that kind of marshmallowy flavor. It kind of drowns out the floral flavor, but then as soon as you get it, it goes away. So you just get it for that real quick second. It comes in, but then it just fades out and then it fades back into this bitter kind of really super subtle bitterness. There's not a whole lot of bitterness to it. It's very smooth. I mean, there's not a whole lot of bitter characteristics to it. There's not a whole lot of hoppy IPA characteristic to it. It's just very light. I guess I, I do get maybe a little bit of a citrusy kind of bitterness. I, I really don't pick up any bitterness and I'm really struggling to pick up anything out of this that's not that kind of floral flavor at the very upfront or the quick drink, again, that kind of marshmallowy flavor, but it's super subtle, so don't, don't get it twisted. It's not like, um, it's not that I'm taking this quick drink and I'm just, whoa, my face is just exploding and Lucky Charms marshmallows are flying out of my mouth. It's not like that. Um, it's just a really subtle, that's like the closest flavor that I can really kind of grab onto to talk to you about. I have to say, I'm, I have not really been impressed with the lower ABV, um, juicy IPAs or the New England style low ABV IPAs. I feel like there's a lot of work that needs to be done there. Now, this is a perfectly serviceable beer. I think if you went to a, a one of the Detroit City Football Club games um, that, you know, this would be a perfect beer to have. You're sitting, you know, in the stands, you're rooting for your team. You're not there to drink a beer and you're analyzing it and you're, you know, wistfully remembering, you know, the first time that you cut your grass and you had a beer afterwards because you were sweaty. You know, you, you don't do that. You're just watching the game. You're drinking beers. You're crushing beers because you want to get a buzz on and enjoy the game with your buddies. That's why you're drinking a super light beer at a game because you want to be able to drink a bunch of them, you know, and maybe get a buzz on and, and watch the game and enjoy it. But I just think that there's a lot of work to be done in the kind of New England style, the juicy style IPA sessionable styles of those beers. I think there are very few that do it well. 
Um, I would say that this is probably the first beer that I've had from from Brew Detroit where I'm not over the moon about it or I'm not just really impressed. Like I, I didn't come into this beer having high expectations, but it's just it's a beer. You know, it's a it's a perfectly crushable beer. It's a good hot weather beer or lawnmower beer if you're doing a bunch of yard work or you're out in the heat and you're sweating. It's a great beer to have if you want to just have one or two beers. You don't want to tie one on. This is a different change of pace, but is this something that I would go out and buy another four pack of? No, I wouldn't because it's not, it just doesn't set my world on fire. I'd much rather buy a four pack of something that's maybe a little bit higher ABV, that's a little bit more fuller flavor, and that kind of, you know, just lights those receptors on my brain a little bit more than this one does. Perfectly serviceable, perfectly crushable. If you're looking for a low ABV sessionable IPA, New England style sessionable IPA, I'd still probably go towards something else. If you're just looking for a beer that you don't have to think about, you just want to crush a few. Then I think Bring Out Your Dad is a really great option for that, but it's not something that I'm going to be buying another four pack of. All right, friends, that has been Bring Out Your Dad from Brew Detroit. Have you had this one before, or do you have a favorite beer from Brew Detroit? And have you ever tried Yumtown? I mean, come on, Yumtown. Let me know in the comments down below. If you like beer, you might want to subscribe and click that bell because I'm here talking about beer twice a week. It's Tuesdays and Thursdays. It's all for free for viewers just like you, and you might miss your newest favorite if you're not subscribed. So until next time, I'm Sean from Draft Therapy. Thanks for stopping by. And remember, drink craft beer, support your local breweries wherever they are. And most importantly, most importantly, don't forget to treat yourself to a little draft therapy. Thanks for watching. Cheers. <laughs>